It's very common that people take their dogs to the groomer to be groomed, have all their grooming needs met. But what if you could groom your dog in a grooming salon? What would that experience be like? Would it be different with using the equipment and the setup in a grooming salon and a professional grooming salon versus the setup that you have at home? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Let's find out today. This is Erin. She normally grooms her Great Dane Duke in the bathroom tub at home in the shower. He's very good for her, but it's a challenge. He's a huge guy. So I asked her to bathe him in my salon today with my equipment and see what she thinks. And after Erin goes through all this hard work with Duke today in my salon, stay tuned to the end of this video because I am going to interview Erin and ask her her feelings about the equipment that she used today. Erin and Duke are going to demonstrate using my Prima bathing system. This is the Encore model. This is something that pet owners can purchase at home. And today we're going to ask Erin what her thoughts are with using this on Duke today. Yeah. Ooh. I asked Erin how long it usually takes her to wash Duke at home. Maybe 15 minutes. Now Duke is a very large dog, but he is short haired, so he would definitely not take too long to wash, but you basically have to climb in the shower with him. Now I asked Erin, does it feel different using a bathing system versus washing him by hand? It is a little awkward, but I like that it's shooting soap out instead of, instead of pumping it in my hand. We're going to ask Erin in a week how Duke looks and feels. Get under the belly. Duke really seems to like it too. This isn't the normal bathing method for Duke and he definitely seemed to like it. I think one of the biggest struggles for people who own a very, very large breed such as Duke is being able to bathe him and take care of his grooming needs as often as need be because it's such a chore to do this at home. However, if you had to pay a groomer to do a large dog like Duke, say every six to eight weeks, that's quite an expense. So it really does put people in a bit of a pickle when it comes to, hey, I love my large breed, but it's tough maintaining this coat and or paying somebody to do so. So one of the things that I wanna remind all of you pet owners out there is that the pet wash stations around you are such, such a benefit to you and your pet. They're set up for you to bathe, wash, and dry your pet safely in a very safe climate controlled environment. So please look up pet wash stations near you. I did a review of a pet value. I'll link it in the card right now and telling you what I felt as a professional of the pet value pet wash stations. Another tool for you to take advantage of when bathing your pet are these pet bathing gloves. I asked Erin if she'd like to try this on Duke. She said this is wonderful. It definitely helps to exfoliate. It releases the dead hair. It stimulates good blood flow to your dog's skin and coat. I'll link them in the description below for you. And also because Duke is a short haired shedding breed, I encouraged Erin to try this bathing brush as well, which is a bathing brush on one side and a boar's bristle brush on the other side, which is great for de-shedding and massaging the skin and coat on a short haired shedding dog like Duke. Using the right tools for your dog breed and the right equipment is definitely crucial to a successful groom, to keeping your dog's skin and coat healthy. And you know it is absolutely my pleasure to share the secrets of the pet grooming industry with you so you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. And don't forget that all products and tools that are available to professional pet groomers are available to you too. Another one of my favorite secret tips I shared with Erin today is just these mixing bottles that you can purchase. They're so inexpensive. You can purchase them on Amazon and you pre-mix your shampoo and conditioner. As you can see, we're conditioning Duke right now. I do think conditioning your dogs is very important no matter what breed it is, especially if they're just pets. We're not showing these dogs. We want to definitely maintain healthy skin and coat. These mixing bottles really make it easy to dilute your shampoo and conditioner and to apply it to your pets in the tub. Rinsing your dog after shampooing and conditioning is so very important and this step is often cut short by pet owners, leaving buildup and product behind in the coat. 
Having a good spray nozzle is the key to a good rinse. Again, pet wash stations are equipped with the top of the line bathing equipment, including low flow, high pressure sprayers. And a thorough rinse is imperative to promote healthy skin and coat, meaning that product left behind that is not completely rinsed during the bathing process will likely cause dry, flaky, itchy skin and could lead to what is considered skin allergies and require a visit to your vet. I've only been a groomer for about 15 years. <laughs> That's my right. technique, I got good technique up in here. You've been grooming a great dame, so you definitely Ooh. have some experience. Woo! And you, usually you do this in your shower. Yeah, but I don't have this nice thing. Put your back into it, come on! Oh. You like that? How many thousands of people take to drive you? Four to five, because of a baby. Really? Yeah. Well, let's see what you think of. This is one pound. I mean, I use it all the time in the shop. Let's ring it out. See how much see we got. got. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that satisfying? <laughs> so satisfying. <laughs> Whew. That is better than a cocktail. Ready? Are you ready? Oh, you are so pretty. You did a good job. Do you have any more to ring out of that one? Oh. Let's see. Oh. Are you ready? ready? You're only ringing out one. Yeah. Oh, there's some more. That's a lot of water. I, I just love that. That is awesome. Get, get yourself an <laughs> absorber towel. Link below. <laughs> Erin is not comfortable trimming Duke's nails at home, so she has a standing appointment every six weeks with me to take care of that for Duke in my salon. You may not be a fan of trimming your pet's nails either, so I encourage you to find a pet groomer that you like and schedule a reoccurring six-week appointment to keep your dog's nails from becoming overgrown. This is good that I'm showing everybody that I actually use my Miller's Forge to cut big nails. I've been telling them that. I don't know if they believe me. I use this Miller Forge Clipper for every dog. Because remember, untrimmed nails can break during activity and injure the quick, which is the blood vessel inside your dog's nail, especially if you have a large breed of dog. I've been trimming Duke's nails professionally since he was a puppy, and look at how confidently he walks into the salon, hops right up on the table to have his nails trimmed. It only takes one or two sessions of working with a dog to train them to become comfortable having their nails trimmed. So be sure to keep Keep this high on your priority list when you get a puppy. Infrequent trips to the groomer for nail trims will usually result in a very fearful dog when it comes to having their nails trimmed. Here's a tip. I like to trim the nails immediately following the bath because the nails are less brittle and they're moisturized from the bathing process. Well, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about being in a grooming studio. But I've had a good trainer. Oh, it is kind of fun. We are using the Shern Bayo Super Cyclone Force Dryer. And I asked Erin what she feels about the difference between drying your dog with a force dryer and hand drying your dog, towel drying your dog, or with a blow dryer. I think it blows out the hair that is not supposed to be there. Like the dead hair? Yes, dead hair blows out the dead hair. Yes. I know. <laughs> and then it leaves more room for new hairs to grow in. Another benefit that I just am thinking of, you know, this is not meant just for dogs. You get out of the shower, you can, you know, get it right up in there. And then you're, ta-da! Totally! Not just for we also put cotton in Duke's ears to dull the sound, as well as we, this cotton was in his ears all through the bathing process to keep water out of his ears and to protect them. Yeah. She's like, this is so mortifying, Mom. I'm tired. I need a nap. You're interrupting my afternoon nap. So this is a brush that I've been using on my bulldog. This is a boar's bristle brush with a, a curry on the other side. You could actually use this in the tub. In fact, Aaron did demonstrate that. And even to use the curry side on a short-haired dog like, like Duke or a boxer or a, 
a Rottweiler, I mean, you, you know, you name it, a bulldog. This just stimulates the skin, the skin which helps to stimulate good coat growth. And the boar bristle brush itself will easily slough off any dead hair that's left as well as it produces a luster from the dog's coat. The boar bristle brush does that. So it will encourage the dog's natural oils to release into the coat and just make them shine beautifully. So this is the best type of brush for a short haired breed. It does something for the coat. That's why I say it's the best choice versus a slicker brush is good too because a slicker brush is definitely gonna stimulate the skin, blood flow, it's gonna flake off any dander, which is good because then leave nothing but good healthy coat to grow and skin. But the boar's head is ideal for the short hair breeds, boxers, Great Danes, Boston Terriers. You guys get where I'm going with this. But then, like I said, you can go ahead and use the curry side, which it feels very good, doesn't it? And that is actually gonna stimulate some you know, blood flow to the skin, which is what's gonna encourage good, healthy skin and coat. And it also does help remove any loose hair, anything that needs to shed out. Oh, he's so beautiful. Now I'm gonna show you a magic product right here for a short-haired shedding breed or a short-haired breed. This is the Silken Finish by Nature Specialty. This is wonderful on a coat like his. As you can see, it's already quite shiny. I'm gonna squirt one squirt in my hand. I'm gonna rub it together and I'm gently just going to gloss down Duke's coat and just make him shine like a mirror, especially the, the, his coat that is black. You're really gonna see that it shines so beautifully. And the only thing left to do is I have a little squirt of Nature Specialty Ominescence. And now he smells like a, a show dog. We are going to remove the cotton and clean his ears. All right. Now let's walk Duke out. Let's see what he looks like in the sunlight. He is beautiful, guys. He is just shining. And Aaron and I are just getting ready to get together here at the end of this video and talk to you one week later after Duke's groom here in my salon and see if there was a difference between her grooming him at home and her grooming here with my products and my equipment in the salon. Because though there is differences in grooming your pet in a professional grooming salon, there is also things that you can do at home. And that's what we were trying to bring to you in this video. There are things you can do at home to really produce a professional groom for your pets at home. So let's see what Aaron has to say. So Aaron, it's been exactly a week since we washed Duke in here, since you washed Duke in here as a professional. Ha have you noticed any differences in when you bathe him at home versus bathing him here using a force dryer, using the Prima bathing system? Obviously your back probably feels better. Yes, he was <laughs> he was way higher, it was way better on my back. Yeah, back. but, it, but yes. it, the grooming, is it the same? Or did you notice he seems to have, be smelling better longer? He smells way better longer. Okay. Usually at home, I don't get as good of a bath as here, because this is professional and it's amateur at home, but I do the best I can in the tub. So some of the things that we used, like this loofah, we used to wash Duke's face, and we lost the footage. It was the lost loofah footage. Lost loofah? It's gone. We lost it. We thought we were recording, but we weren't. And it was the best shot. It was. He was all sudged, sudged up, <laughs> and he looked like, oh, I don't want to be in here. But it looked like, he looked like Santa. See? Like Santa a pause. Yeah. It was cute. It was But cute. we did. We used this, and boy, did it lather. Yeah, it was the first time he ever got loofahed, and he yeah. liked it. And we even used it a little bit on the body. Yep. You know, we can do that, too. However, we also use some other things. We use these orange gloves. 
They are exfoliating gloves. Is that what they're called? Spacey gloves. I don't know. They're bathing gloves. Yes. They have these little grippies on it. So they're kind of Oh, they're rough. massaging. But they're yes. soft. And we have one at home. We have a big black one that goes like up to here. Same thing we, like here? Yes. Your little knobbies are a little bit nicer than our knobbies. Probably because this is grooming quality and ours is probably something cheap well, you but can buy these off amazon yes a link in the description below get that link <laughs> um i like this one better we do use it like after we have the soap on him to exfoliate him to get all this dead skin off um but i do not use it to rinse him because mm. i like to feel if all the soap's out I saw you when I was watching and putting the footage together. That is very good that you do that. Not everybody thinks to do that. And you are kind of massaging the soap off and out of his skin as you're rinsing him. Yes. That's very important. I'm going to throw a clip in here right now and show everybody what we're talking about. Yeah, check it out. That's a good thing that you do that. Now, what about we use mixing bottles because you know all the shampoos and conditioners are dilutable mm -hmm. when we're washing our dogs. These are great because they help you with your dilution ratios. So, and it also helps you to dispense the product on the dog yes. nicely. Yep. So what you are can... your feelings? I do like this. Um, we do not use a conditioner because isn't this like a conditioner? Well, you can, you, well, you can, this, you can put anything. Okay. You can use shampoo. It's just the mixing bottle itself. Gotcha. Oh, I like the bottle. Yeah. And then you can squeeze it wherever you need to put it. You know, it just, I think the, it makes Get the application. A <laughs> oh, it does. Because you can put it where you need it. If you're under the belly, you can kind of go like this and whoosh, 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 get like in the there. Windshield wiper. Yeah, like whoosh, whoosh, washy, washy. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. That'd be fun. But bottles work wonderful. Get yourself one. Is there a link below? Link in the description below. Link, get your link. <laughs> All right, and another thing that we did was we tried this brush because I thought this would be great for Duke mm -hmm. because he's a short-haired breed. Um, it's the boar's head bristles. When he's dry, this is a great brush to mm -hmm. use on a, a short-haired breed like Duke, a yep. short-haired shedding breed especially. It polishes the yep. coat. It releases his own natural oils into the coat, which keeps his coat more waterproof and yep. hydrated and and you tried the um bathing side mm -hmm. when you were washing him. oh he likes this side he likes anything if somebody's yeah. touching him and scratching him and massaging him he will be like oh like he little really yoda he yeah. loves it oh yeah yeah and that makes a brush like this serves so much purpose for a dog's coat such as duke's mm -hmm. that like my bulldog this is what i use on little gus when I get this out, he comes running. He, it feels mm -hmm. so good. It's like a massage. Yeah. So I, that's a, a, if you have a short hair breed, even like a pit bull, boxer, this brush is wonderful for that type of ooh. coat type. And for that breed, it's really. Yeah. You I mean, can even. Oh, sorry. I was trying. To... And what else do we, <laughs> what else do we probably have in the description below about this brush? There's always a link for everything. <laughs> There might even be a link for her. Yes. I'm not going to forget to talk about the absorber towel. I think you really like the absorber this towel. This is my favorite part <laughs> of grooming. I'm going to get me some. This is the absorber towel. It's kind of like a chamois for your car, but it's a chamois for dogs. Yep. And instead of using six beach towels on Duke at home, used one and wrung it out twice. Yeah. And we got a lot of water yes. when you wrung and, it out. And they're big. They're big. Like, are big they're really big hello we're still here <laughs> okay um but that's actually amazing. the smaller one they make a they make two oh. sizes they make a bigger one this is the 17 inch love it yeah me too and i, I find too. the 17 inch is fine even on a big dog yes absolutely it's wonderful it's soft it like a towel is just kind of hard and it just oh, doesn't abrasive. yeah this and it isn't. doesn't work very well this was great i actually need to find that link it's in the description below. Hashtag get your links today. Everybody get a link. Yeah. So I, I, I was really happy for you to try that product yeah. too because I know you said, oh, we go through several towels when we dry Duke at oh. home, which well, of course you would. And this but is nice. I definitely, definitely I want to order feel two. it's a necessity. Absolutely. And it's very affordable. Yeah. That's How much are they? 
Jeez, I think they're twenty three dollars, something like that. Oh, at that's most. absolutely Actually, worth it. Actually, it might be cheaper. I haven't looked in a while because probably rolling it up wrong. No, it, it, you definitely want to store oh. it damp so you feel how it's still damp. Yep. So after I'm done with the end of the day, I wash, and I only use three absorber towels in this shop. But I, I don't wash, I don't groom as many dogs as I used to. I groom maybe five dogs a day. But I'll wash them in a hot, in a bucket with hot water and a little bit of vinegar and put some baking soda in there too. It smells like a wet towel right yeah. now. <laughs> I was seeing if I smelled vinegar. No, and it, vinegar just helps it deodorize a little bit, yeah. you know. And Cleans take, it. Yeah, that's it. You can wash them in the washing machine, but just do not dry them. It'll yeah, ruin them. And you wring them out after you wash them and store them damp in, a, in either a bag or the tube that they came in. Yeah. Yeah, so that's maybe great. I think because you helped me with this demo, and this is actually the third demo that your dog has been in. Right. I think I owe you a couple absorber towels. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy! I get to take an absorber towel. No, I'm you can't take mine. That's mine. Because it's already worn in. She <laughs> don't want me to take it. I want you to have your own brand. Don't new tell me what I, to do. You use oh, my Oh, maybe dog. I'll buy you a loofah too. Ooh, I <laughs> love loofahs. I use them on my skin since I was little. Absolutely. And why are we only now just figuring out that we should be using them on our dog? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. What's wrong with us? It's because you're so smart. Get you a good We're groomer. smart. We're all better together. That's what we, we are. Erin, thank you so much You're for so Sharon welcome. Duke and for doing the work. I didn't have to do the work. I did have to clip his nails. Yes, I do not like doing that at home. Oh, I wanted to ask you. Oh. That's okay if you don't like trimming your dog's nails. Duke oh, comes to me no. for nails only. She takes care of all his other grooming needs. I tried one time when he was little, yeah. and he may have moved a little bit, and... I saw some blood and couldn't get it to stop, and it scared the poo out of me and said, I ain't doing it. Is that why you're not comfortable doing it? That's why I'm not comfortable, because he's got big nails, and I do not want to see my baby hurt. Didn't we see a a nail boo-boo with with Duke one time? What happened? He, his nail was getting long, and he was running out on the back porch. Having fun. Having fun, and the nail got caught in the deck and went sideways. And he bled like a stuffed pig. What happened? We had to take him to the vet and they had to cut it. They had to go in and literally cut it under the skin out. Mm -hmm. And now the poor little nail just grows outward. It's still there. It doesn't even get as long as the other one. Yeah, it doesn't grow as long as the other ones. I noticed that too. But hey, listen, that happens, especially with a large breed because Mm -hmm. they have a lot of weight behind them when they're running and playing. And... His nails have never been like massively overgrown. It's just no. that he's a big dog. Yeah. So that's why it's important that people just get on a routine schedule with a groomer every yep. six weeks and they won't have to worry about breaking a nail like that as, as often. It mm-hmm. still could happen. But. Right. And I feel comfortable bringing him here. He likes it here. He gets he right up it. on the grooming table. Right up. Did you notice when we tried to get him in the tub, he was reluctant? Do you know why? Because it was new. He's never been in there before. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want to go. It was like pushing a cow into a I have footage want to go. Yeah. should I show a little footage a little clip oh yeah I'm gonna show a little clip just a little clip because we both were like okay this is horrible it's awful so and I'm the bubble wrap mom I can't handle that kind well of stuff. I don't like forcing them this is why I always tell people especially if you have a large breed you want to start getting them groomed when they're a puppy yes just like when we started working with his nails he was young mm-hmm. and within like what the third time he would walk up and get on the table himself. I didn't even yep. have to tell him what to do. Yep. And now if we're talking too long and he comes in and I drop him off and it takes too long, he lets you know. He starts barking. Let's go. Yeah, he's like, Come I in. came in, I got my nails yeah. did, and I want to go. Yep. No talking <laughs> But afterwards. that's why he wouldn't get in the tub. So if I was, if, if somebody has a big dog and they just expect that they can just take him to mm-hmm. a groomer when they're three years old, they're highly mistaken. Yeah. Absolutely. That has to be worked with from a puppy up. Puppy up. Just like I don't know if I would be able to take a big dog in. like If it weren't a puppy. Yes, I have to grow up with yeah, dogs. Yeah, and that's okay. I know what you mean about that. Yeah. And one more thing that I was curious to know how you felt about it was the force dryer. That's obviously something that we, you don't typically use. No. I may use the hair dryer once in a while on him and he likes it he just lays down and doesn't stay in one spot like hooked up here but 
that was nice because I could get real close to the skin and it just shoots the water out, dries them off so there's no condensation or dampness left in the fur because that can be very bad for your pet. That's absolutely learning. true. That's learning. absolutely true. Yeah, but I loved it. And you know what? He liked it too because it was almost like a massage and he was like, so it's it really is. It's warm. It's not yes. cool air and it's not hot air. Yep. Because there's no heating element in a force dryer. It's just yeah, slightly it was, warm. Yeah. I wish somebody would force dry me yeah, you, after actually, a shower. You did force dry yourself I, I in maybe, the video. Yeah. <laughs> I have it on tape. Duke's great. Thanks again, Aaron. You're so welcome. Thank you so much you. for having me. My mic is better than yours. I like mine better. <laughs> they like mine better, don't you? <laughs> All right. So everybody, ha they have to go because they have to click the link. Oh, they have to click the link. And I got to okay. go get me a shampoo. Oh, just yes. No, I'm going to get you one. Okay. Well, did, you go, did you do a good job? Yeah, you did. But I'm going to go home, Mom. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I, you do, you do, and obviously you know over rinsing is very important. Even if we can't scrub them up as much as you want to at home, over rinsing everything off is important. So that's what keeps this. Don't laugh at me. I'm sorry. Okay, this is gonna make the bloopers. <laughs> I can't take you serious. <laughs> We used a loofah on Duke to wash his face with the Tropical Clean Facial Scrub. That was the first time he got the loofah. <laughs> What's so funny? Your eyes are tearing. You want to laugh so bad. <laughs> yeah, baby, has to use me for her show all the time, and then she puts me in this big metal tub. <laughs> so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I was scared to get in the tub and scared the poop out of me.